Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew, uh, me and Seth and Richard and Krim, we are all here gathered around, not to play a commander, but to discuss commander. And this time we have a pretty hot topic uh, that we kind of stumbled into uh, in a previous game or so. Apparently a lot of the crew members have differing opinions on MDFCs. These are modal dual-faced cards. And we're specifically going to be discussing the MDFCs that came out from Zendikar Rising. Uh, these are all cards that have a spell side, uh, a creature or an instant or sorcerer or what have you on the front. And on the back side, we have a land. Most of the lands enter the battlefield tapped and they all tap for one mana or one colored mana. And the mythic ones are very special that you can also enter the battlefield untapped, immediately use them and pave three life instead. And uh, we had a discussion recently where, uh, you know, some cards like Ondu Inversion, perhaps, uh, there was there was uh, differing opinions on how good some of these MDFCs are. On one end of the scale, you know, we've got like Seth who plays every single MDFC that's in his colors. And then there's people like me who uh, run, you know, conser very conservative approach on them, too. Um, so that is the discussion for today. Very controversial stuff indeed. And the way we're going to be doing it is each of us are going to give a rating on every single card. So we're going to go through every single MDFC from Zendikar Rising, and we're going to each give a grade after our discussion on it. And the grades go from S, which is an auto-include, which means we're going to alter our deck to accommodate it, and we're going to even consider playing it in five-colored decks. Uh, a ranking means really good overall, uh, and we're very happy to cast this in most decks. Uh, B ranking is only good in certain decks, where we're very happy to cast this, but only in specific decks that, you know, can synergize with the card. And then C ranking is average. So C is actually average. It's not bad. It's average. It says, I'm not happy casting this, but I have nothing better to do. So usually you're trying to use it as a land, but sometimes you cast it as a spell. It's fine. And then D is just don't play. We don't play these cards, uh, and if it's in our deck, we hope that we discard it to gamble. That's basically what D means, and we do not recommend. <laughs> um, so before we jump into the individual cards themselves, I just want to go around the table and, and, and hear from the crew, uh, what are your criteria that you're looking for when evaluating an MDFC? And I'm going to kick things off with Seth. What, what are you looking for when, when you're evaluating these cards? Uh, so... I don't really care what they do all that much. Like, I do a little <laughs> bit, but they're lands. They're lands that do things. So I don't really care how good that thing is. The fact that there is, it's a land that actually can do <laughs> non-land things uh, makes me really rate MDFCs highly. So I'm my criteria is basically, is this a card that I could ever imagine casting and being happy with casting? And if the answer is yes, I'm probably going to play it in my deck. It, there's some that I'm like... Uh, even in its best case scenario, this isn't really going to be something I want to cast. Those are the ones I rank lowly, but uh, but yeah. So I uh, I really like MDFCs and uh, and I think they're all pretty good. But I okay, guess we we'll get okay. to that. Fair, fair enough. I, I was worried you'd be like, oh yeah, and I run every single one as long as my color is. You're right. And that would <laughs> <laughs> that would have been weird. Uh, Not quite. I don't love them quite that much, but close. Fair enough. Almost. Fair enough. All right. Uh, next up, we got Richard. What what do you look for when you're rating an MDFC from Zendikar Rising? Uh, pretty much like Seth, like how desirable the front side is. Mana cost doesn't matter too much unless it's something uh, that I need to play on curve. Uh, and my bar is basically, is it better than a scry land, right? Like the, the scry land is kind of one of the first tapped lands I'll start putting in after all the untapped lands. So would I play this over a scry land? Unlike Seth, there is a downside, right? It's one color and it comes into play tapped. Right, so it is a free card, but there's a downside. So it's the scry lands that get cut uh, to accommodate this, and then if it's like S tier or A tier, then I might even cut like some real uh, dual lands that you know come into play untapped. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, Krim, what do you look for uh, when evaluating these cards? When it comes to all the MDFCs, I pretty I don't care about the mana cost uh, at all, really, because the thing here is like much 
Seth has mentioned, he, it, it's a spell, right? It's a spell that I'll be able to use whenever. Uh, so I, I don't mind that. And so the only thing here is that the land comes into play tapped. So the what I do care is about the effect. I don't mind paying for it. Uh, even if if it were like a nine mana Doom Blade, I'd pro- like I, <laughs> I still play like Hagra Mauling in like pretty much everything, right? Because I, I think Hagra Mauling is a really good card, which for some odd reason I, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll adjust something. <laughs> so uh, I play Hagra Mauling in like every list of mine. So yeah, it, it's a four mana kill spell, which isn't great. It's a tap land, but I do love the versatility of it. So yeah. I it it comes I don't care about the mana cost so as long as it's just effect I would want and it goes with the theme of my deck then I'll 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 just play it because it almost feels like a free spell almost yeah almost. okay okay fair enough I guess I'm like the most down on them out of out of the bunch and I I I play a lot of MDFCs too um, basically for me I do think like there's a pretty pretty sizable cost to the lane side of it like. Um, I want basically the spell side to be an effect that I find desirable, something that I want to ha- happen in in a game of Magic. And I also want the cost to be something pretty decent too. Like Hagrid Mauling, I find myself, because we brought that one up, I find myself not really wanting it more and more as I play it because it is four mana for basically a Doom Blood effect. Um, and I feel like I feel like some people or some we we will go into this a little bit further, but like the land side, it, it doesn't tap for multiple colors. So if you're in multicolor decks, there is a downside to that. But even in monocolor decks, it comes with play tapped, and it's not a basic land. So if you are running stuff to care about basic land types, like a Mary Shepherd, or uh, if you're running extra planar lands or Gauntlet of Power and stuff like that, if you are running those cards, these cards get actively worse if you're counting them as lands. So it's just like a whole thing. So apparently I'm like the most negative Nancy about about these out of the whole bunch, which is cool because I actually really like them too. So uh, some differing opinions here. Uh, I, I like that. Oh, we, we we should ask one more question, I think, which is do you count them as lands or spells when you build a deck? Like, all right, uh, do you what slot do they go in? I know for me personally, I go half and half, and my goal is a lot of times to like have – 33 real lands but like 40 or 41 total lands when you count mdfcs so like each mdfc is like half a land i guess if you want to you want to calculate it that way but what uh, what do you guys do with that how do you count They're them they I, I look at them as a land <laughs> yeah land with upside yeah like i'm not i'm not playing like 37 lands plus like 12 mana sources and like eight MDFCs. Like that's like too much. Like they're, they're somewhere between like, you know, seven, like 75% of land, right? Like, you know, if, if you play them exactly as lands, you're never going to cast them because you have to like actually play them as lands, right? So, you know, they're almost a full land to me, but not quite. So I don't, we, I don't think that they're worth it in three color decks though, four color decks. So. That, that's why I do factor them as lands. Well, they don't mana fix. Like the more colors you have, yeah. the definitely yeah. worse. I personally count them as spells, though, which is why I get so harsh on them sometimes. Like, if 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 it's a good effect, but it costs a lot of like way more mana than I, I'm willing to spend on it, then I don't I don't want it in the deck. And I don't know. Like I generally go like 36 lands, 38 lands even, and then some MD seats on top. Um, but counting them as lands themselves, they come in if they tap. They tap only for one color. Ugh. The untapped ones, though, I count as land slots, though, because you can end the end of the battlefield untapped. So, like, Seagate Restoration and whatnot. So, so, awkwardly enough, I actually count that as a real cost. Really? Like, that three life matters. And I know Seth, like, just <laughs> writes it off because he pays, like, 20 life for one card. But a lot of times, games come down to, like, a handful of life. And if you play a shock land in an MDFC, like, that's a significant amount of life you've lost, right? So, I actually... Unlike Seth, dislike just playing random uh, MDFCs that come into play untapped if I have no purpose for them. Well, you can just because play that, them tapped. three life matters. Right? Like, if you really like the effect, you can just play them tapped. Yeah, I mean, if I like the effect, I'll play it because I can pay three life for it, right? But yeah. if I, I have no purpose for it, I won't put it as, like, a free roll because that, that there's three life attached to it. You start with 40 life, though. We're playing, we're life playing Commander. Just right? <laughs> if, if, I think you guys should be worried in, about your life. I'm not hitting you with birds, but... okay? <laughs> That's like third. That's like <laughs> one fair one enough. untapped land that that costs three life. That's three bird hits essentially. That, that's three, three combat rust steps, wing right? falcon connects. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's three fledgling ospreys that just hit you. 
We know how that ends, right? So, <laughs> all right. So we have some pretty differing opinions, which I like. So that means there's going to be some pretty decent discourse. So now that we've, you know, covered the basics of what these MDFCs were covering and how we approached them, let's jump into the actual cards. And we're going to kick things off with the black MDFCs. And we're going to be starting with Agadim's Awakening. This is a mythic black sorcery that costs X and triple black. And the front side is a sorcery that says, return from your graveyard to the battlefield any number of target creature cards from, uh, they each have a different mana value, X or less. And then the back side is, you know, a land, but it enters the battlefield. It can enter the battlefield untapped if you pay three life and it has for black mana. All right, so <laughs> this card is a card. And let's go over the ratings real fast. We've all rated them ahead of time. We're going to discuss them afterwards. So, Richard, you gave this card an A. Seth, you caught this an S. Krim and Tomer, uh, you, we both gave them an A. So, A's for Richard, Krim, and, and me. And Seth got an S. Uh, wh what do you all think about that? Seems like uh, seems like we all mostly agree. I mean, I, I rank it a little bit higher than the rest of you. I, in general, like, yeah... The five color deck thing is a concern, and maybe that's like a little cheaty with the rankings. I can't honestly say that every one of these I put in every five color deck, but for the ones that come into play untapped, they are so free rolly for me that unless I have a deck that has like zero creatures or something, uh, I'm playing out Gadeem's Awakening. Like it, it comes to play untapped if I need a two three life ain't nothing. I, I spent twenty to to wheel before. I, I, like what, I, I'm what is actually three tempted life? to put this down to B. Right, this is actually one of the ones I I don't like, but because it's a free roll, like Seth said. But you're playing black. It doesn't power Cabal Coffers. That's a big downside. Yep. And I've never seen us actually cast this card ever. Yeah. <laughs> like literally ever on Commander Clash, right? Like the other ones, like we cast frequently. This one, I've never seen cast and do anything. So I'm a little iffy on this one, but I think coffers is a big issue because black decks like coffers. That's, that's what I was always saying is like, even, even in a monocolored deck, if you are running cards that care about basic lands, these do have a cost. And I feel like that, that's kind of like left out of the discourse whenever I'm talking to people about MDFCs, it's like, oh, it's just basic, it's a basic land, it's a freebie. It's like, no, there are costs to not running basics. Um, that's why, but like, Black I is don't special. Know. Black is, everyone has coffers. But you, the other, like, I don't care how many planes I have, really. You can make it count <laughs> as a swamp if you have Urborg, which, I mean, yeah. that's always the case. But that's, like, world. another tutor for, for the deck, essentially, to find the second part. It's also true. Is the bar really that high to play a... <laughs> a non-basic black land like are, are we really like oh okay i can't have like strip mine and no. like good cards no. because oh my coffers might make one less it, mana it, it, like, it adds up though right like me. you have to, like let's say you play bajuka bog and then you play i don't know uh strip mine. wasteland or something a strip mine like it like i've actually played monocolor decks where I, I don't have enough forests for like my actual <laughs> like forest ramp because I, I can play field of the dead quite easily because i have so many different types of lands right so it's not like the only factor, but it is a factor. And I think this is a good card, right? Don't get me wrong. I think we would play it. But I've just not found it weird that we've never cast it successfully on Commander Clash. That, I, I <laughs> thought I did, but I realized. You did? did you? No, I don't think well, we've ever seen it. Because was it not in my rogues deck? Because it is in every rogue deck that I play. Because uh, I think that this card, even like I even played it in my Grixis rogues deck. So that is three colors, because I do think the effect is powerful enough. And even with a control deck, you still play enough creatures. to Because, like, no, I mean, there are some decks that are just pure control, but sometimes I need to bring back both my, you know, Hall Breacher and Notion Thief to really lock it down. <laughs> you know what I mean? So not this season, but the thing here is, like, yeah, like, I, I think it's the waiting card... in the wings for when they're unbanned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when right? they're unbanned, they'll boom. It's, it, it's ready. So, like, much like Seth, I mean, I don't know if I would alter my entire deck to accommodate this, but I don't think at the same time I have to, really, just because of how many cards, like, I, I do play that, I mean, it may sound ridiculous, but, like, e even if it were, like, to get back, a, like, a, 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 a Gear Hulk, right? <laughs> like, it's, it's true, that's, like, nine mana, but if I'm drawing this late game, eh, 
Why not? I needed something anyway. So I'm kind of on, on board with Seth here. And especially, I, I view it as a, because, you know, just like you had mentioned, whereas, yeah, like, I've played it in a monocolor deck, and, like, sure, let's say that I don't have enough forest, but I look at it as another way to throw a land in there that can then set off Field of the Dead. Because I feel like almost every deck in Commander <laughs> can play Field of the Dead. That's the counter-argument to Coffers. Yeah, but Field of the Dead. Field of the Dead. It powers Field of the Dead. Yeah, it powers Field of the Dead. So, like, there's, there's enough, you know, like, sure, like, you could lose the one mana, uh, but the thing is, you could also gain a zombie <laughs> or start getting <laughs> zombies, stuff like that. It's, it's, I mean, it's it's a, a real situation that does play out often, right? So, I mean, yeah, I, I I didn't mean to say that this is a bad card. I actually do agree with with uh, Seth and Krim that I would I wouldn't put it in a, an S ranking, but I, I do like it at A ranking. It's one of my favorite MDFCs, um, and I would run it in a bunch of like mono black decks, two color decks. Three color decks, you can still do it. Like, it's triple black. I wouldn't put it in a four or five. Probably the triple black yeah. would be kind of difficult there. And it does it does work against Cabal Coffers and whatnot. But, Herbal. you know, it's it's Universal fine. Solid. It's also a spell. Like, if you count it as a spell and not a land, which I, I think I would, um, then it's not really... You're not really comparing it to a swamp. You're ca- comparing it to another mass reanimate spell. And, then, like, if you're comparing it to mass reanimate spells that are on the high end of the curve, you're like... All right, I can have this Mass Reanimate spell, or I can have Agadim's Awakening, which can also be a land when I need it. And I think that's where I compare it. And I'm like, yeah, a reanimation spell that uh, can also be a land in a pinch that comes with play untapped. Um, that that's a pretty spot, a nice spot to be in, and the effect's good. It's like a utility right. swamp. This one's not even hotly contested. We we generally agree. No, just okay, Seth really fine, likes it. Fine, yeah, fine. We, got, we got to keep let's going. Get, we're never going to finish. Let's get to the, the hotly contested stuff then. Uh, we're moving on to the next black card on our list. And this is Hagra Mauling. Uh, the front side is a four mana instant, two and double black. Uh, this spell costs one less to cast if an opponent controls no basic lands. I have never personally seen that happen, but it can. So you can, you can pay for three instead of four. Uh, and it destroys target creature. Uh, no, no restrictions there. Um, and then on the flip side, uh, since it is a rare, not a mythic, it enters the battlefield tapped and it has for black. What do you, uh, so we we have the the rankings here, and there is a little bit of divide more here. Uh, Richard gave it a B. Seth and I gave it an A, and Krim gave it an S. So uh, what do you all think about that? Uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a more of a divisiveness. Uh, so I, I Richard, can, I can like understand all these ratings, right? <laughs> it's I'm surprised about Krim, though. Like, we don't one for one in Commander. I don't want to cast Hagra Mauling. <laughs> it's like a bad... I don't even want to cast, like, Swords to Plowshares. You don't even want to cast, cast Swords to Plowshares. No, it's a one for one, and right? You're, you're down a card against the table. You, you need to do it to not die, right? But you're not happy about it, right? So I actually don't like these one for one removals, which is why I rate this card lower. But I see if you actually like playing these 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 kind of spells then it would be higher but for my you know spot removal i like universal removal like um mm. assassin's trophy uh stuff like that but black doesn't uh, really have a lot beast of within uh yeah well, i just don't play removal dude i don't know <laughs> i just don't like <laughs> what i just don't like the color of best one. targeted creature removal, and you're like yeah i decided <laughs> This isn't universal. I'm just gonna... I just I just don't like the card, right? But you know, if you like the effect, it's it's good, right? The rate is not bad. It's just one more, one or two more than like the equivalent. So, yeah, yeah. It's like two I, more, I think. I don't even care if it's if it's the three cost. If it's ever the the murder casting cost, then woo, that's great. But that's like so rare. However, like the thing is, just like having. In Commander, people don't play enough removal. A single hole breacher should not stop a table, right? So the thing here is, when I play my decks, I think that I should be packing lots of spot removal along with... Because there's a few things that just, like, people pack that are just uh, one creature combo or something like that. Or one... Like, it, it's very creature-centric, and I need to stop that. And at the, it's at the cost of a swamp to me. I don't care if it's tapped, because, I mean, Commander is mostly a slow-moving format anyways, so I don't mind the tap land. Uh, very rarely do I mind it. And for the upside of just being able to remove anything, I like that. I personally like because most of my decks do... I don't na- necessarily have to alter my deck to accommodate this because all my decks do this anyway. So they just need to kill <laughs> stuff and counter stuff. And so that's why I'm a huge fan of these kind of effects. And I think it's a, it's an easy auto-include in any deck that even has black outside of like the four and five colors. So 
I just love I love removal. Yeah. I love spot removal, and if it's universal, I'm I'm here for it. Hmm. It's it's one that <clears throat> I play like any mono color deck is in, any two color deck it's in. Once it gets to three plus colors, that's where Hagra's Mauling is a little bit a little bit more sketchy. So I do really like it, but uh but yeah, it's mostly for me limited to mono color and like two color decks. I I also run it more than some other MDFCs for sure. I mono color black decks I'll almost always run it. Two color decks almost run it as long as you're not in like Orzov colors. If if it's Orzov, I feel like Orzov has so much better spot removal that even the fact that Hagger Mauling can sometimes be a land is just not enough for me. Like D Spark and Anguish Unmaking and, and, and those ones where basically like you're paying the same amount of mana, but the flexibility is so much better that uh, I don't I don't like hacker mauling as much there. But why um, not more removal? Is what I mean. Like because, at the like I mean I I just feel like that's the thing. It's like why not right? Because then this way you're more likely to have something, and it's just a land at not at its worst. I mean, if I'm comparing it to Swamp, then, and again, it's, it's it's like I'm comparing it to, like, Crypt Ghast and, uh, you know, the Extra Planar Lenses and the Maguses and the Cabal Coffers and all this stuff, um, where, you know, being a tapped non-Swamp actually hurts it a little bit. And what if I'm comparing it as removal, it's like, you know, it's not as good compared to the Orzov options. When you have both, obviously, it, it gets better, the flexibility. Fun. Hmm? But isn't that an argument against like every charm <laughs> ever printed and every like command every printed? Charms are fantastic. Be like, oh, How dare you? Neither effect, neither effect is actually that good. Like the power of MDFCs is yeah. it's both. Like that's why they're good. Is it is a land when you need it, but it's also like a removal spell. And even if the land side's a little bad because it's tapped and the removal's a little more expensive, like it's the charm value. D- does that win you over Tomer? If you think of them as charms, think of it as a charm yeah. where it's a land and a spell. Now, do you love them? S? No. <laughs> no. Because if the effects are bad, there's not not all charms are good, right? I think I think we can agree on that. There's some like D tier charms. I don't know. Um, charm. And okay. some charms are really okay. good. It depends how, how valuable the effect is and how cost effective it is. The flexibility is just one factor to make them better. But like if you have two bad over costed effects, it doesn't make it suddenly a good card. Moving on. We got Malakir Rebirth, and oh, there is some discourse here. Uh, Malakir Rebirth is a one mana instant. Uh, choose target creature, you lose two life until end of turn. That creature gains when this creature dies, return it to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control. All right, and uh, the, the ratings here are, are pretty uh, uniform, except for me. Uh, Richard, Seth, and Krim gave this one a B, and I gave this one an S. And I feel like I need to defend myself here. I consider Malakir Meyer, uh, Malakir Rebirth, uh, one of the best MDFCs ever. Actually, yeah, it's like in my top three, I would say. I run this card in basically every single mono, dual, three color deck. And and I've been creeping it into like the five color decks even too. Uh, Basically, like if a deck is revolved around your commander staying on the battlefield, like most commanders are, like honestly, how I, I can't think of a, a deck that I have that isn't like heavily reliant on the commander being on the battlefield. You want to protect it, and paying one mana to have the creature basically come back from basically any destroy effect, any sacrifice effect, basically anything that's not exile, anything that isn't exile, this will protect it and bring it back to the battlefield. You got death triggers as well, so if there's any sacrifice trigger, like a Psalm Simulacrum or whatever. Uh, you you get that death trigger. It gets an enter the battlefield trigger too because it's re-entering the battlefield. And it's not even over-costed for what it does. Like if you compare other protection spells that does this exact thing, they're all like one black mana. Like it's exact same cost. So it's just, it's so good. It's so good. It's like the most, it's the most <laughs> well-costed. You're not paying extra for the flexibility is what I'm trying to say. You pay two life. That's it. Two life. It's so good. Oh my God. It's so insane. So uh, insane. I'm- Bees? Really? Bees? <laughs> really? Everyone gave bees because we don't play these cards. We don't play this card. It's so good, Do you though. play Blossoming Defense like in every green deck, right? Do you play... There, there's like black ones that can trip that do the same thing, right? Like, it's better than Blossoming Defense, though, because you're like, sure, let it die. Oh, it's a Wrath of God effect. I don't care. 
It comes back. Sure, <laughs> but it's basically the same, right? For protection, it's usually lightning greaves and swiftfoot boots or something, right? Or like it's a fairy's protection or... Yeah, but it, imagine... All your things get indestructible. Like there's only so many slots for, for indestructible. So like, yeah, if you really need like this effect, it's good because it comes on a land. But to me, it's not as universal that you jam in every deck. Like it's only specific decks that need super uber protection. I right? just I just have a creature that I don't want dead or a creature that I do want dead, but I want it to come back immediately afterwards. And I put it in there. And that, that's like near, that's 100% of my decks. I don't know. <laughs> I play it only in one. I play it in Kyrick because yeah, just like, yeah, it, it's, I don't need that effect in every black deck. So Gosh. a lot, but then again, you're talking to somebody who wins without their commander all the time. I'll, so, I'll die on try. this oh, yeah, Seth doesn't play his commander either. I'll so. die on <laughs> this make, make I, don't, I don't, I don't play my, hear otherwise. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't play I my commander and I don't care yeah. if my creatures die because they all well, have you don't like, you paid triggers, all that so, mana like, for like a Nixon. Whatever. It's I a Panamonicon though, Seth. It's a single use Panamonicon on the land. It doesn't work on my planeswalkers, so I don't care. Evoke, evoke Moldrifter. Okay, mate. I should probably yeah, not get Evoke Moldrifter, then cast Malakir okay, Birth okay. on it. Boom, you draw four cards. <laughs> Easy. You sold me. All right. He's Moving on. <laughs> Black Bloom Rogue. This is not a uh, instant or sorcery. This is a creature, MDFC. Uh, three mana, human rogue with menace. Uh, it gets plus three plus O oh, as long as an opponent has eight or more cards in their graveyard. So it's a two, three usually, or it's sometimes a five, three. And I mean, milling that much isn't that big of a deal. Uh, but oddly enough, uh, Krim, who said uh, he has a, a two rogue decks, we all gave it a D, including Krim. What's up with that, Krim? You want to explain it that? Sucks. One? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it sucks. It's it menace is a rogue. Yep. <laughs> Men menace doesn't do like I probably should give this an F, but I, that's not a grade I can give it because it's a tap land that also just is a rogue that has menace. That's not actually unblockable. Now, okay. I, a lot of the rogues that I do play are unblockable or require it to be in blue to be unblockable. But it's a so, land. But it's a land that's a... This, uh, yeah, the effect isn't strong enough. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. It's just... Both, a, I, I, two, both and also, D doesn't mean like you literally never play it, right? There, there, there's some niche situation, right? If you're playing a human rogue deck with some stipulation like budget you would put this in yeah right? yeah if you're yeah, if it was a rogue, a rogue, it's just you're not going to put yeah. it in like 95 percent of decks right? yeah that's yeah. what a d means right? if you're on an extreme budget i would put it in an one deck that's for sure all right next up we got palaka predation uh this is a three mana sorcery target opponent reveals their hand choose a creature card from it with mana value three or greater that player discards that card Krim gave it richard a c. seth and tomer or me <laughs> gave it a d Krim gave it a c um targeted discards just bad i would never like, want to cast this i'd like, be embarrassed the, to cast i, I, I would much play rather thought have a C's, like i would much i just rather. i want stuff that hits everyone not one player i don't even play thought C's in modern come on yeah I play right. it in commander <laughs> I, I would run it i would it's not Fine. a great card <laughs> okay yeah, you only give it a c you didn't give it like an s or anything like malagir or bro auto include <laughs> all right we'll move on it is a zoff consumption time which i just love the name of that by the way zoff consumption uh, this is a six mana black sorcery. Each opponent loses four life and you gain four life. Uh, so most of us gave it a D. Seth, Krim, and I gave it a D. But Richard, you gave it a C. Do you want, you have some explaining to do there. No, I don't care. This card's <laughs> bad, but I can see some upside to it. Like you want to gain life or life loss like matters. Like a lot of black decks have that theme. Uh, it's a little reach. Uh, so I, I could see you putting it in this deck. I wouldn't like raise an eyebrow, but it's also not super exciting. So I don't really care about this card. C or D is fine. <laughs> yeah, not much to say there. All right, we covered all the black cards, and now we're going to be moving on to the blue cards. Why aren't we doing this in Wooburg uh, order? I don't oh. know. It's just for maximum tilt, apparently. I did not put the list ordering. <laughs> this is not my Notice my Notice that idea. it's Grixis. <laughs> all right oh no it is grixis so leave a comment you leave a comment down below if it tilted you or not but we're going to blue and we're kicking things off with the mythic rare from uh the cycle uh this is seagate restoration this is a seven mana sorcery four and triple blue uh draw cards equal to the number of cards in your hand plus one you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game so you got to remember that part 
Um, and then the backside, because it is a mythic rare, it is one of the few cards that uh, also can enter the battlefield untapped if you pay three life. If, if you don't, you just enter the battlefield taps and taps are blue. Um, so we uh, are, most of us think very highly of this one. Richard, Seth, and I all gave it an S, and Krim, you gave it a B. So let's talk about this one. Uh, I, to be honest with you, I only like it for its maximum hand size. No maximum hand size, and that's it, right? So that, that like is nice. Cards? The drawing cards. You don't like drawing cards? Well, I mean, mo most people don't draw extra cards. What? <laughs> because, because, <laughs> oh, <laughs> he plays at a table oh, with Palm Beach. He's like, this, this, this gets oh, blown up by Hall Breacher. Yeah, yeah, I'm not I'm not getting blown up by Hall Breacher. Uh, this, but this does nothing is... with Narset. Why would I? <laughs> Tap out seven uh, mana into a whole yeah, creature this, this mana. This is no seven way. mana. Like it's a lot of mana, and this is one of the ones where I do care about the cost, um, because the effect is just draw a card usually, or draw what? two cards. The rate, the rate doesn't seem great for me. And on top of that, like I, it's not a good. It, it's still a good card. It's just not something I would include in every deck of mine. That's all. I still think cool. it's a fine card, but I just don't want it in every deck. Because if, if example, if I'm loaded on ca like counter spells, I'm not going to tap out for for this, right? So Krim, Krim doesn't want to tap out. I can, yeah. I can see why yeah, you want to tap yeah, out on turn it's very seven. Much draw go because fl uh, Hull Breacher needs to be flashed in at then and then <laughs> step or in front. Of somebody yeah, exactly. Else castles but, you get. but also because Hull Breacher can be flashed in, I respect it as a magic card. So, <laughs> see, so the I'm, easiest way to get around that is just ban Hull Breacher in your middle. No, no, no. Hull Breacher is a needed effect, so cards like these oh, don't God. work. Oh, <laughs> I. I think this is like maybe top two, top three overall of all the MDFCs. Like this is one of the ones that is in every deck. If I got blue mana, five color, one color, doesn't matter. Like this one, this one's in every deck. Five color even. I agree. I agree. I, it's this card is, draw. It's an on tap land. It, it like, also it's fits exactly every what theme. I want, no matter what deck you're playing, you can play this without breaking your theme, right? Because it's card draw. If you just like soul ring and then turn five or six or something this like you probably won the game if it didn't get countered and then you can play how you want to play you can play your janky birds or whatever like you're not you're not skewing your game plan because of this either so i actually really like this card too yeah that a lot of them have like okay you need a bunch of creatures in your deck like agadim's awakening good but you need creatures or malachi rebirth good but you need creatures this is just good you got creatures got no creatures there's no restrictions on this one I mean, I, I agree. Uh, I will jam it into most decks. Maybe not all five color decks, because it is triple bl blue. But I <laughs> set the disapproving face. I, I saw that. Drawing cards, I do, though, right? I, I do, but sometimes cards. it's hard to cast this, is what I'm trying to say. Triple blue is a little bit difficult, but like. But then you play it as a land. You're yeah. Done. Like, that's the but then it's, it, right? then it's a land that doesn't mana fix. So. It, I, I think there is a, a little bit of a cost to it, but like I think I've I ran Seagate Restoration in like ninety percent of my non-budget blue decks, and I've never been disappointed to see it. So that's how I, I view it as a solid S. All right, moving on, we got uh, a, a clone effect, Glass Pool Mimic. This is a three mana shapeshifter rogue. You may have the mimic enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control, except it's a shapeshifter rogue in addition to its other types. Um, so, uh, looking at the score, we got Richard, Seth, and I all at A's, and predictably, Krim is putting it at, at, at an S. Uh, is there <laughs> any specific reason, Krim, that uh, uh, you I, put it at I, I love this card. I think it's such a good <laughs> effect for three mana. I, that I don't I don't think that it's a problem for me. And as I had mentioned, even my control decks play creatures. So mm. and and since once again lining up with the it doesn't cause makes me like tap out. <laughs> it's cheap enough to where I if I have a cheap creature or something like that, I flash in something at the end of your turn for three mana. I can easily just make another copy of it to ensure that I have redundancy. And so when you spot removal one, I get to have the other one. So so it's just another Hall Breacher, is what you're saying. It could, be, it could be. All right, I play other creatures. All right, I play other creatures. Yeah, <laughs> you can't sometimes. flash it in, right? Like it, no, you can't flash this in. Yeah. But the thing is that it's three mana. That's yeah. really nice. I love that for like a clone effect, even if it's only my stuff. This is this is one of my favorites, but I do want a decent amount of creatures in my deck. Like this is great in all the Panharmonicon decks and so forth. But if I don't have like 20 creatures then i'm probably not considering this for my deck all right moving on we got uh, a spell 
This is a counter spell. Ooh. <laughs> this is Juari Disruption. This is a two mana, one and a blue instant counter target spell unless its controller pays one. So essentially this card is Force Spike that costs one additional mana to Force Spike. Um, and we're looking at it. We all gave it these. I think I think this is pretty predictable. Uh, we barely mm -hmm. run Force Spike in general. So a two mana Force Spike is not an effect we generally speak. But I, I kind of want to play just once to get somebody with it because I think it would be funny. It's more of like that's, a meme. That's the upside. Thing, right? the, the funny thing is the it's not a land, right? gotcha, you, but... you can't play it as a land if you're trying to get someone with it. Yeah, yeah. Right? You have to you're, 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 you're your waiting land. for the perfect moment and they're like, what are the odds that when they're actually trying to win, they don't have one additional mana, right? Like, you're, you're not going to like on curve someone. Man. The turn counter. you play this land is a turn that your opponents would have been got by the other side. It's like a fact. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. We got uh, a little bit of a combat trick for the next one. Uh, this is Bayin. Bayin. Uh, Seth, can you help me out here? Bean. 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 Bean Veil. This is a two mana instant, one in a blue. Creatures your opponents control get negative two, negative O until end of turn. So basically, uh, it's a combat trick that can protect your creatures if they're be attacking into blockers. They can surprise save them. Or if an opponent is attacking you for like lethal or something like that with a go wide strategy, you could potentially live. Uh, off this effect, um, but we all give it a D, and I think that's it's pretty pretty apparent that like this effect is just not that desirable. It's not that strong. If it was like a straight up fog, I think this would be a very different story. But negative two to a bunch of creatures does not even guarantee that it's going to have that much of an impact on the game. It's very very narrow, I think. So I think we're just going to skip over to it and move to a more interesting one. All right, moving on. Saloon D Vision. This is a three mana instant, two and a blue. You may look at the top six cards of your library. You may re reveal an instant or sorcery card from among them and put them into your hand. Uh, put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. So this is kind of like a impulse for only instant spells or instant and sorcery spells. You can grab anything you want and it's three mana, but you can look at the top six. So it digs pretty deep. Um, and we gave it all C's all around. And I think that's kind of fair, right? Like. If I if you're, if you're spell, spell slinger, slinger, yeah. If you're spell slinger, it's fine. Otherwise, I think it's just not a card you would play. Yeah, I, I run it in my spell slinger deck, and it's never too exciting. But I'm I'm glad that it's there. But yeah, it's basically spell slinger, or, or don't run it. All right, next up we got a uh, uh, unexciting one: Umara Wizard, five mana. Merfolk Wizard, when you cast an instant sorcerer or wizard spell, Umara Wizard gains flying until end of turn, and it's a 4-3. So 4-3 beater, none of us like it. It's a D. Uh, it's just not very exciting. It doesn't really do anything in any particular deck that's super exciting. Uh, so, well, that, that's basically it for uh, the blues. We're going to be moving on to the reds, and we're going to be starting with the mythic of the reds. This is Shatter Skull Smashing. This is X and double red for a sorcery. Shatter Skull Smashing deals X damage divided as you choose among up to two target creatures and or planeswalkers. If X is six or more though, uh, Shatter, Shatter Skull Smashing deals twice X damage divided as you choose among them instead. And because it is a mythic, it can enter the battlefield untapped if you pay three life. Richard, Krim, and I all gave it A. Seth, you gave it an S. So let's start with you, I, Seth. I will... I will give you a, a little sneak peek into my rating system. If it is a mythic MDFC and it comes into play untapped, it is going to be an S every single time. Uh, and it's a removal spell. It's a land that come, can come into play untapped if you need it to. It's not a great removal spell, but this is what I have definitely seen cast on Commander Clash. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw Krim like, take out multiple creatures with this. So we actually have like firsthand experience of it actually being good in practice, plus untapped land. So, I mean, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I really like this card. I play it in ev basically every deck that has red mana, more or less. It's good, but I wouldn't put it in a four or five color deck. Like anything that supports it, auto include. But even three is pushing it. Like two or one, definitely. But that that's to me a differentiation between S and A. Like I'm not going to like add more red sources to my five C deck to like play Shatter Skull Smashing. Like don't care. I'm playing five colors. Red. I can wrath that's... the board in some other way if I really need to, right? <laughs> 
that's that's fair. I, that is know. that is fair. I think five color is where it gets it gets sketchy for me at four or five colors, but still has a, sh- a chance of showing up. I think I think once it gets past two colors for me, because then you start getting into the colors that have better effects. So for for cheap. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm totally attached the same. to a land. Where it's like it costs a true. lot of mana to do the thing. It costs a lot of mana to do the thing. So if I'm in a color that does the thing that I want, which is blow up creatures, for way more efficient costs. Then, I, then the fact that it's an untapped land uh, gets less valuable to me. I don't know personally, but I, I put it as an A. I really like it. I really like it in in a bunch of decks, but I won't put it as an auto include. All right, moving on. We got uh, oof, oof, I like this one a lot. Spoiler alert: Valakut Awakening. This is a three mana instant, a two and a red. Put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. So instant speed, basically like a super cycling effect where you get to cycle up to your entire hand um, and draw a a brand new one. Um, So we uh, gave it mostly S's. Richard, Seth, and I gave it an S. And Krim, you gave it an A. Krim, why why do you hate this card? (laughs) I don't hate the card. Once again, it's just... I don't know. I don't like for here. This is a cheap spell that I like, but I don't put it in every deck. I I, I just I'm not high on card draw spells as as much as everyone else is. I just think the card is like, oh, it's pretty good. I, all right, I played here and there, but I think that's Krim. because I'm ready of a, my meta game, right? Like, eh. I, that's what I was gonna say. Krim rates cards as if there is always a home reacher on the battlefield. Hey, that's, Krim, that's Krim's rating system. <laughs> just assume there's a, a Narset effect he on the battlefield. He thinks everybody is de- as degenerate as he is. That's what that's his rating skill. He assumes like, I, we all run hull breacher at, on him too. I don't. I don't put myself in a situation to get blown out by hull bre- uh, breachers. You need to live a little, Krim. You need to live a little. Uh, I, I would play this without though. a backside. I play this as yeah, like the this, front this side alone. This so card that's is why it's really good. This card is I've I've yeah. played it in every single red deck, even five color decks. I think this is my all time favorite MDFC, um, and I run it in five color decks because it's only one red, and and I've never been disappointed by it. I mean, I've never been hull breachered by it, which is great, but I've never been disappointed by it. Like every single time, <laughs> like if I have a bad hand and I can cycle away. That it doesn't go to the graveyard, so it doesn't fill your graveyard. But even so, it's always just been such a, a game changer. And then worst case is just the land, you know. It being instant makes it very powerful. Like I still rate yeah. it highly. It's still an A. You right? play around so. Hull Breacher a little bit easier. Okay? Mm-hmm. I love instant. Yeah. <laughs> if you show me an instant, I, I, I'm, what if there's a Teferi on the battlefield, crew? Come on. <laughs> well, that's true. Ooh. That's true. <laughs> but worth it. I think <laughs> worth it. I. <laughs> I think this is alongside Seagate Restoration is like my my S plus tier. Like these are the the staples of staples that I will play in literally every single deck. Well, that's what an S is supposed to be. Mostly. Yeah, there, there's even variance within within the S tier. I would <laughs> okay, say. Okay, fair enough. We can have plus or minuses. This is, a, this is an arbitrary ranking system. We don't make the rules. <laughs> Or we do make the rules. That's that's true. We literally did make the rules, but we don't have to follow the our rules. The rules don't matter, right? The points don't matter. This is yeah, okay. All right, we're just moving on. All right, we got Song Mad Treachery. This is a five mana sorcery, three in double red. Gain control of target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature. It gains haste until end of turn. So basically, this is Threaten, right? Uh, Threaten is a three mana sorcery with the exact same effect. This is the exact same effect, but for five mana. Um, and we gave it, a, oh, some divergence here. Nobody gave the same score on this one. Richard and, wait, I just lied. That, I just didn't read all the names. Uh, Richard and, and, and I all gave, both gave it a C. Krim, you gave it a D. And Seth, you gave it a B. So I'm going to start with uh, Krim. You really don't like this card. It's, it's <laughs> like pretty bad, right? Like it's like, why do, it's not real removal. <laughs> it's only a temporary thing. And, and sure, I could put it like some kind of sacrifice deck, but I, I'm not. I'm not adding that. There's so many better effects for for like significantly less than five mana, and on top of that, isn't a tapped land. Like this is worse than a guild gate to me. Okay, Ooh, harsh harsh words. <laughs> I like this card. So one of the things I like about MDFCs is because they come attached to a land, it's a way you can get an effect into your deck that you normally wouldn't be able to play. Like mm-hmm. you can't just run a threat in, in a random deck without having like a sacrifice plan or something. But 
being able to like steal your opponent's bomb and smash them with it that is a powerful thing that can happen in the course of a game. So I actually play this card probably more than I should play it, honestly, uh, for that reason alone. Like, I think the upside is there and the downside is a tap land. Like, sure, whatever, tap land. I, I already play a lot of budget decks and a lot of tap land, so whatever. It's just another another tap land. And when I yoink your commander and beat you to death with it, I'm going to be pretty happy that, uh, that I put it in my deck. Yeah, fair enough. I, I personally will only run in a threat in deck. All right, moving on. We got Spike Field Hazard. This is a one mana sorcery, just red. Uh, Spike Field Hazard deals one damage to any target. If a permanent dealt damage this way would die this turn, exile it instead. Um, yeah, that's these all around. Pretty expected. Uh, it doesn't really kill most things in the format. Um, yeah, that's that's it. <laughs> All there is to say there. So we'll move on. Uh, Kazul's Fury. Uh, this is basically a fling. This is a three mana instant. As an additional cost to cast a spell, sacrifice a creature. Kazul's Fury deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. So much like the Threaten card, uh, this is a fling card that costs one more mana instead. Um, so we gave it uh, some different uh, numbers. Krim, you gave it a C. Me and Seth, uh, me and Richard gave it a B, and Seth, you gave it an A. Uh, let's start with Krim. What, what what do you think about this card? So I I actually th this was graded. It, it scales to the old scale because there I I assumed there would be an F rating. <laughs> so uh, I thought this was actually just perfectly average and decent in some decks. So I would actually bump this up to a B, uh, according to this rating, because it is. Still, like, playable, and it being a fling is nice. Uh, flings are always appreciated uh, in, in a specific style of deck. So I, I, I like it in a very much so a fling kind of deck. Other than that, though, I'm probably not playing it. All right. So you like this card the most, it seems. So what what do you like about it? Uh, it combos with my song mad treachery. <laughs> yes. That's the, the, MF, the MFC yeah, combo. Yeah, you're you're combo. down two lands, Seth. You I'm gonna get them together. Down two lands right you now. You yoink. <laughs> you yoink it. You smack Eight them. Then you sack mana. it and damage them even more. <laughs> But it's about really sending the, a message, right? <laughs> it, 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 it is. It is about sending a message. And also, it's kind of the same thing I said about Song Mad Treachery, really. Like, I don't know, games, someone gets down low on life. That happens many commander games. This is a land that's like the burn spell that can close out the game. You throw a random creature at someone. One of those effects that you wouldn't play fling in most decks, but because it's attached to a land, I find myself playing this in a lot of like one, two uh, color red decks. Just just for value and for fun. All right, moving on. Uh, we got a boring one, Akum Warrior. It's a six mana Minotaur Warrior Trample, four or five, it sucks, so we're just gonna move on <laughs> to the green. <laughs> it's bad, <laughs> just take my word for it. It's, it's Yeah, yeah, very bad. <laughs> very bad. All right, we're moving on to the green section and we're starting with the green Mythic. Turn Timbos, <laughs> one more time. Turn Timber Symbiosis. This is a seven mana sorcery, four and triple green. You may look at the top seven cards of your library. You may put a creature card among them onto the battlefield. If that creature has mana value three or less, it enters with three additional plus one plus one counters on it. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So basically, pay seven mana, look, dig seven cards deep, find a creature, put it onto the battlefield. If it's a small creature, you get some counters on it. If it's a big creature, I mean, you got a big creature, yay. <laughs> um, and we got some differing opinions here as well. Uh, me and Richard were, again, in sync here uh, with the A's, Krim with your B, and Seth, you're an S. Um, we'll start with, with Krim again. Uh, more conservative than I, I see. <laughs> this card, though an untapped land, because even, let's say this is, I think this is good in a specific deck, just like how Collected Company requires you to have a, a nice amount of creatures. And I don't want to hit like a land or elf off this, right? So it feels kind of bad uh, in a, like a control deck. I can't just play it there, even if I do have creatures, because the number of them are low. So uh, this this is just okay to me. In a, in a specific deck, this is very good. But then most of the stuff that I'm playing, I want to get my cast triggers in green. So, or, or, and like, I, I guess I don't mind. Like, I want to hit Eldrazi with this kind of stuff. So, but I have to 
get lucky and hit an Eldrazi. So this is just okay. It doesn't hit Planeswalkers. I think that that's also a big thing too. So it's <laughs> very, true. it's very much so not in a deck you would see me play. Not for a forest. I'm actually also downgrading my own ranking to B. When I was thinking about it a little bit more, I don't actually put Turn Timber Ranger in most of my or Turn Timber Symbiosis in most of my decks. I feel like it's a late game card, but like, there's I don't know. Late cards. If you're if you're casting it, I feel like you're so far behind. Seven mana for this effect. And then you can hit like just like a bad creature off it. Oof. Yeah, in Commander where there's but so many cards. So, I think it's like really good with top deck as a land. I don't know. Right. But yeah, like, but it's not but, a forest. Would you rather top oh, deck a forest oh, or a turn timber symbiosis? Exactly. Right. Exactly. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, it's That's a B plus. It's an A maybe. I don't know. Richard, what do you think? Uh, you're you're higher. I, I think it's I. good. Okay. I, I think so. I agree with you that you might cut it because green has so many good tutors. Right, if you think of it as a spell, but if you keep thinking of it as a land, right now you can have Court of Call and Green Sun Zenith, but it's not Finale not Devastation. Forest. It's not. That's one and less mana you're making with Nissa. Remember, I told you how it's sometimes hard to get enough force in a mono green deck. This is one of the reasons why I think it's worth <laughs> cutting a forest so that you could just play a random dirtily green card off the top seven. Yeah, but if you're playing Band Commander, this is not feeding <laughs> Rufellos. That is true. <laughs> Seth, like, you love I, this. I, I, I swear it will happen right. where you will cast like Sky Shroud Claim and not have any forest to fetch in a mono green deck. It will happen <laughs> because there's so many good cards. I think it's totally worth. And mm. there's not that many forest matters cards. Uh, so I, I think it actually is worth. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I think this it. one is <laughs> this one's this one's kind of between A and S for me. It, it, it is out of like the untapped ones. I would say this might be my least favorite of the untapped uh, MDFCs or like second to least favorite maybe. Uh, but it still comes into play tapped. It's green. Green decks, what do they have a lot of? Creatures. So uh, sure, there are scenarios you can construct where it's like, oh, I'm mono green control or something, and this will be bad. But I think in your typical green deck, even a multicolored green deck, when you compare this to top decking a swamp when you're empty handed in the late game, this wins out by a lot. And even if you hit a little creature, it gives you that bonus of pumping it. So I really like this one as well. All right, all right. Well, moving on, we got uh, a big old creature to talk about. This is Kazandu Mammoth. This is a three mana elephant creature, three, three, one in double green with a landfall ability. Uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, Kazandu Mammoth gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So it's a three, three for three, which is, you know, okay stats for limited. And uh, whenever a land enters the battlefield, like it can get kind of big, especially if you get multiple lands uh, each turn. Um, so, uh, a bunch of us gave it C's. Richard, Krim, and I all gave it C. Uh, Seth, though, you gave it a B. So, we'll start with you, Seth. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> I think our B, according to our criteria, only yeah. good in certain decks. Uh, this is not something I would play in every deck, but I do think if you're playing, uh, landfall-style strategies, or you're playing, like, Tetyova, other decks that are, like, build around that, this is one of the MDFC creatures that is actually not a joke. We've talked about a lot of them and just ranked them all Ds across the board because they're so overcosted and underpowered. A 3 3 for 3 isn't exciting, but it's not horrible. And then one land drop makes it a 5 5 and multiple land drops, and you have a huge creature that it can actually do damage. So don't play it in every deck, but if you're playing a deck that's making a lot of extra land drops and has those synergies, then I think it's kind of an auto include in those archetypes. I would say in landfall, you would probably not even play this, <laughs> right? Like, there's... really, it gets chumped. It doesn't have trample. Like, if you think about landfall decks, what are they doing? They're making like giant creatures with Omnath and Titanias. They're drawing cards. They're they're doing all kinds of shenanigans such that a three man of five five is not really where you want to be. Like on turn three, you want to be ramping, right? But I mean, I guess you could play it. it it actually hits landfall itself, right? It's a creature that creates landfall if you need it. So it's not bad. But I, I, I say C because you, when you actually cast this face up, you're like, eh, something went wrong. I don't really want to be doing this, but it's better than nothing, right? Yeah. Land, 
Uh, landfall decks also want more lands than most decks. So th yeah. I think cards like this is an easy way. We've seen it in standard where you have like the grow spiral decks need to go up to like 29, 30 lands, which was unheard of a few years ago. So this is a way you can get your landfall deck up near 50 lands, which but is probably the optimal way to build it. But people just don't. Landfall decks do are, the la enough. are the decks that run out of lands to fetch. You you could actually run out of forest trying to fetch forest. In which case, this because I do mammoth is going to make you really sad. Well, I would I would count That's this as a non lands. True. Well, I mean it is a land slot, but like once you're going over like forty lands in your deck, you you can get prone to land flooding. And I do appreciate Kazandu mammoth in like you know the the final land slot. I need to hit like a stupid amount of lands in my landfall deck. The final land slot is Kazandu mammoth. I almost would never be happy casting this, but there will be situations where, like, I just don't need another land in my hand. I have enough, more than enough lands in hand or on the battlefield or whatever. And then, fine, I'll, I'll play a 3-3 three, three that can hit as a 5-5 five, five or a 7-7 seven, seven or whatever. And it'll be fine. It doesn't have trample. It's not very exciting or anything. But it, it's like that late game pressure that you're kind of happy to see at some point and maybe like it's on the land on the battlefield and then you bounce back your hand and you cast it i, I would, would it, not be would you rather just play a fetch land though that's like two landfall triggers rather than a creature or a land i feel like i feel like both like i personally have not played it in any of my landfall decks but i kind of forgot it existed so i'm going to give it another shot but like it's still a, it's still like a c for me i wouldn't be happy casting it but it's nice I, that i feel it's like there, commander players Commander players don't play enough lands. I think uh, we should do an entire <laughs> podcast on how many That's lands you should topic, play. Yeah. way higher <laughs> yeah. than, than in people actually play, especially in landfall decks. And this is probably the best MDFC to uh, Kazul's Fury at your opponent's face. So uh, you got to have those synergies, those <laughs> yeah, MF true. MDFC <laughs> combos. You make some that lands, you escape shift, you Kazul's Fury, you win the game. Broke it. Busted. All right, uh, we'll move on uh, to this is a this is a, a strange one that we we have discourse <laughs> on. A uh, vast with fortification. This is an instant green instant. It will cost one green uh, to put a plus one plus one counter on target creature. That's it. That's all. That's it's very simple. Richard, um, you know this isn't the fight spell, right? Because I can yeah, use yeah, for I, the fight spell and then I had it. <laughs> I was a little confused because yeah, Seth, Krim, and I all gave it an easy D, and I thought we were going to skip over it very quickly. But Richard, you actually like it a little bit more than us. You gave it a okay. C. I want to hear all, a little First of all, it's bit. one grade higher. It's not the end of the world. But second of all, <laughs> if you care about plus one plus one counters. This could be useful, right? This could be another really? card draw, right? Yeah. I it could be plus three, plus three. Plus three. I would not. Yeah, <laughs> I, I not played a lot plus one. I would not spend an entire <laughs> card <laughs> to put a single plus one plus one counter okay, on. Okay, Richard, I, I mean, would it's, like it's a forest over this. <laughs> I would like a forest over this. It, it is questionable. I mean, it's close, but fine. Whatever, I don't care. I'm not going to fight you guys on this. You shine, win. <laughs> shine. Peer the, pressure, oh, shine. I, I will tell you that I, no had, one cares. I had that mistaken for the, the fight spell, so I marked this that. This is not I a hill I'm willing to die on. You can have your victory with Vastwind Fortification. I'm saving it for the next battle. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I see I see somebody medal with the next one. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, oh, this is going to be a fight. This is going to be a fight, yes. Uh, this is Tangled Florahedron, <laughs> which uh, has a lot of controversy surrounding it. This is a two-mana, one-one elemental that can tap for one green. So it's a mana dork. It's a land. It's bad at both. It's Tangled Florahedron, everyone. And uh, obviously, this is one of the reasons why we wanted to talk. Who keeps changing the thing? Uh, we also we wanted to talk about MDSCs in general because of this card as one of the main reasons because we had a fight about this. Um, Richard and Seth ga uh, gave it an S. I gave it a C, but somebody keeps changing the sheet to make it an S. It's a C. It's going to show up as a C in the video because I'm making it. You can't change that. I, I see you changing it right now in real time. It's a C. And I kind of want to spite make it a D just to really, really hone it in there. All right. Let's talk about uh, Seth and Richard. Sell me on this tangled florahedron nonsense. Stop giving it an S once. All right, Stop I, it. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it because Seth likes all MDFCs, so his argument's <laughs> right. a bit worse, right? Get a get, yes, but uh, to me, you can argue for our team. This is top two. This is top actually two? like 
double S tier or S plus tier to me. No way. <laughs> the front side is two mana ramp. That's on curve. Yes, you can play one mana mana dorks, but there's only so many of them, right? So the front side is just straight up rampant growth. And don't tell me you don't need another rampant growth. Yes, it dies to Doomblade, but it is rampant growth. And then if you already have a rampant growth, then you can just put this as a land, right? So I don't know why you guys are rating it so low. It's basically rampant growth with upside. It's like saying you're not gonna green sun zenith a dried armor because it dies to GTA. Like sure, right? But you're still gonna make that play every single time you have the opportunity. You will play your two mana ramp uh, if you can, right? And if you have nature's lore or whatever, then play this as an actual land. It's fine. Otherwise, two mana ramp. Okay. Every deck, five C included. <laughs> every deck. <laughs> 5C? What? All right, once all right. Seth, once I, Seth revealed this to me, I'm like, this I'm is going in every single There is a lie that is a big cross. <laughs> First of all, remember what we were talking about charms? How, like, uh, you were saying, like, oh, well, you know, they have some bad effects, but, you know, you have them all together on the same card. And my argument has always been, if you take a bunch of bad effects and for a high cost and you put them all together, the flexibility doesn't make it suddenly a good card. And this is a, my prime example of it. This is you really either rated it as an S plus though. No, <laughs> no, Krim, no. <laughs> Have you never played a two mana mana dork that taps for one mana? Yeah, but if one mana of any color. If it was one mana of any color, then I'd be like, oh, this is kind of interesting. It's mana fixing. This one is a Llanowar elf that costs double, so it's a turn two Llanowar elf instead of a turn one, or it's a bad forest that enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't have the basic land type. So it's bad. I I don't like it. I I will run it in some decks maybe. Maybe some deck. I'm sorry. Like a Hedron deck? Like, what deck would you run it in if you think it's There's bad. a hypothetical out there that I don't know needs, needs a certain amount of creatures. You like know? a deck that needs rapid growth because you've already exhausted like the one Fenhorn okay, right, Elves here, and one Lawnmower Elves you can play. Here's right? one. Uh, here's two actually Nikia of the Old Ways, which doesn't allow you to cast non creature spells. And Gru- uh, what's uh, Rurik Thar? <laughs> Rurik Thar does not want you to cast Rampant Growth when he's on the battlefield, right? So, boom. Zelda. Decks. 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 Set is dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what, do you, what do you think? I don't understand how you can't see how good this card is. It really blows my mind. We talk all the time about how ramping's like the best thing you can do yep. in Commander. Ramping and drawing cards. This is a land that can ramp you when you need it to. I mean, and it's close enough. Like you said, double the mana. And technically it is. But two mana mana dorks are like not unplayable in commander there's two mana mana dorks that people play like is it really like how is it that different than a mind stone or something like that except it comes attached to a land how about myriad landscape it's the same deal right there's some downside to it it's colorless but it ramps you off of your land right it's more resilient because it's lands right but yeah it's it's more resilient that's a big thing it's look would you play would you play a mana rock what if someone vandal blasts Right, you but know, when you play so four hundred, someone Wrath of Gods, right? Like, yeah, it's it's vulnerable. It's not as good as a straight up land, but you ramped, right? I I think this is wow. just two mana one one that doesn't really do much. Like, I don't even. Yeah, care. Grim, I don't even... Grim also gave a C. All right, yeah, I'm he not doesn't the only play green. Here. He doesn't even count. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I played a lot of like green blue. this season. I, think... I played a lot of green this season. <laughs> I think he just he just ranks down every single green card as low as possible out of spite. <laughs> What? No, 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 no. But yeah, like this this card is so medium. I, I don't know. I, I don't think it's like over the top good or S tier. It's just like, wow. I guess both are both sides are very medium. <laughs> All right. I guess we're, we're at an impasse here. Impasse. So I don't even know. How to say it, it. It's so good. I, I, I like you, the, the only uh, the only one challenging it is Andu Inversion, which Tomer also rates really low. But like those are the top not, two for Andu me. Inversion is leagues better than this card. All right, Oof, all right. I I would not agree with that. I think they're in the same category. It's like of... it's like what's better, rampant growth or austere command? It's kind of hard to compare the two, <laughs> right? They're both really good, but they do different things. Oh man. Oh, we'll, we'll get to Andu Inversion. We, we're saving the best for last. We're going to move on for the sake of time, though. Uh, and I should see what we're talking about. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to move on to... What are the what are the Darlings? MDFC Darlings. Probably the most played one of of the set. Uh, this is a Balaged Recovery. This is a three-mana sorcery. Uh, two and a green. Return target... Return target... Uh, one more time. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So this is basically... You take Regrowth... 
You add one additional mana to the cost, and boom, you have Allaged Recovery. A lot of people love this. Like the community in general, just is 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 uh, loves this card, and I think most of us do here too. Uh, we got three S's: Richard, Seth, and Krim. I'm the only one who changed it up a little bit with an A. Yep, an A, which means I love it. It's not in every deck. Why? It's, why would you not yeah. play it? I'm. It's, I'm it's like genuinely. One it's one green. Like, it's when would you not like play double. it? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and 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 it, it doesn't matter what deck you're playing because you want a card back at some point. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not as high on it as you, as you guys. Like sometimes, <laughs> but you just what? wanted to be unique. No. <laughs> didn't want no. You didn't want one agreement on a well, quad first of all, S It's card. out of my budget range. Sometimes it's like a three dollar card. Uh, it's so it's good that the whole break. community more, has more like, banded sometimes, together. Sometimes I just don't want to run a regrow. Sometimes I want to like get all the, the cards from my graveyard back to my hand in one go. And Balagate Recovery doesn't really fit that all the time. I think it's a really good card. I'll run it a bunch of times. Uh, most decks? I said most decks? I'm really... A. I gave it an A. I'm very happy to cast this in most decks. Not all decks, though. It's not my favorite one. And I'm not going to put it in the same category as Seagate Restoration or like Malakir Rebirth. That's all. How's Malakir Re Rebirth better just than not Malachir as conditional? Rebirth. Yeah, that one's no, conditional that you have a commander no, that no, like you need to no, save, this, right? This is like what? you want cards. At you you want a card. Would you like to draw a card of your choice from your graveyard? <laughs> Look, it's a high what A. Would you give it's Eternal not, Witness. It's it's a high A, but it's not in the same category as Valakid Awakening and the other S's that I gave. Is Eternal Witness like a B to you? Like, where, where would it? Like, do you just don't like the fact of getting your best card back from your graveyard? <laughs> well, I don't. I think, I think Eternal Witness is also overplayed too, but that's a different topic. <laughs> He's been so. That card too is too many very times. good, Tomer. It's, it's very good, but if if you don't have any creature synergies in your deck, then it's a worse regrowth, and you can't change my mind. You can play both cards, Tomer. You can play I, regrowth and I Eternal Witness. I know, but Witness. there's a lot of a lot of people play just Eternal Witness and not regrowth. And they have you know zero... why it's better though? Why? You can tutor up Eternal Witness. You can yeah, use Sunzina Court of Calling. If you don't have you any can't creature, do that with the if you don't have any creature synergies, like you have no blink effects, no bounce effects, no ways of tutoring up specifically creatures or reanimating creatures, why are you running Eternal Witness over for growth? I'm, I'm just saying you're green. You're mind. running Green Sun Zenith, Court of Calling, and Finale right, Devastation. It's about... it's okay. auto include. Right? We're talking about MDFTs. <laughs> we're moving on. We're moving on. <laughs> we're staying on track, Richard. We gotta stay on track. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Bye, 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 bye. <laughs> Colony, Colony ambush. Let's go. <laughs> Colony ambush. <laughs> this is a three mana instance, two and a green target creature. You two mana. Two mana. It's two three, mana. Three, three mana. Three mana. Is that okay? Oh. Yeah, that's worse than I thought. What? Hang how, on, changing my grade. How dare you? How dare you? It's a Seth, three mana. It went up. Two, two mana instant would be the correct rate, right? Three. One mana. One what? mana fights no, or sorcery. No, it's it's actually okay. We'll, we'll explain. Let me read the card first. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Colony Ambush is a three mana instant, two and a green. Target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. Now, what is this card based off? It's not based on Prey Upon, because Prey Upon is a green, one green sorcery. It's based on Pounce, which is a two mana instant. So the main difference here is instead of yeah. Prey Upon, it's instant, and it's based on Pounce instead of Prey upon. That, that, so it's one thing. mana off rate, right? It's, it's three versus two, right? Yeah, which is like yeah. like Balagad Recovery is is three versus two as well. Um, yeah. But Valkyrie Awakening is really good. <laughs> That's what I'm Awakening saying. Is <laughs> it was like somehow like appropriately cost. I don't even I don't even know what it's based on, but whatever yeah. it is, it's fantastic. Anyway, uh, so we have some diverging opinions here. Richard and Krim, you gave it a B, and Seth and I actually agreed. For the first time ever. First time ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a. For the first time really? in many cards. Wow. Many We've moons talked ago. <laughs> uh, we both think it's an A. Um, so Seth and, and I are right. But Richard and Krim, why are you wrong? <laughs> Dude, this card is... It, it's okay, I guess. I mean, like, I, I don't hate it. Like, I think it's cool in, like, a, a stompy deck or whatever. But I... like. I'm not. I'm not playing this in every deck. I thought you yeah, it's so creatures. conditional. It's yeah. it's a one for one, which we've already established is bad. But b you need yeah. to have something that fights and wins. Exactly. Right? Like that, like that, that is a hard. Way. That is a hard thing. It's a one for one that requires you to have a creature. If it were a one for one like like Hagra Mauling, where I just kill it automatically, that's great. This is like I also have to have a creature, and the creature has to be better than the biggest threat. Yeah, you, you need to win, and a lot of times, like, can you fight a Golos with this? With how many creatures can win, right? Like, you know, you have to be playing oh, green. really big, green. You green have big things. creatures. 
That's and whole they thing. survive. You get to untap and do whatever you want yeah. with your big green creatures all the time. Like, <laughs> so why do you like this? I'm, uh, I mean, it's a it's a way to get some extra removal in your deck for free, essentially. Like, it's a, it's a removal spell that comes attached to a land, so it's taking up half of a land slot. So, and you're a green deck, so you likely are gonna have big creatures. Of course, if you somehow don't have creatures or don't have big creatures, your mono green tokens or something, then it's gonna go down in value. But I think the typical green deck. It, I play it in my typical green decks. So just the average green deck, this is gonna gonna find its way into my deck. I put it in all my green decks. Basically, like mono uh, green, mono green, and basically any any green deck that doesn't have better access to removal colors. Kind of like Hagger Mauling. Remember uh, Hagger Mauling? I also gave it an A. I'm not gonna run it in every single black based deck, but I'm gonna run it in most. This yeah. is, this is worse than Hagger Mauling though. This they is... can bounce. It is. They they can do all it kinds of worse. things, right? You you need to have a creature. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like there You're are a lot of things that go that's on. That's the issue. And it's instant speed, and it costs three. Hagger mauling is usually going to be costing four. But you don't need anything. I'm just always going to be able yeah. to kill it. Well, that's <laughs> why I rate it. Why why I rate it equally? I, I think hagger mauling is is better, but it costs more mana, right? And then calling it ambush costs three mana. But it, and, but there's more hoops for three mana, right? Yeah, like, but. Like, you're a green deck. You but have green. Creatures. Like green always has hoops. Usually has hoops to kill stuff. <laughs> Traditionally, I run, 2019. All, <laughs> I, I run in all my green decks that aren't don't have access to like white or black. Essentially, if it's like a gruel deck, simic deck, or mono green, I'm it's always in there. Anyway, yeah, A's and B's. I mean, it's not even that far of a, a rating thing. It's not like we're fundamentally in disagreement. It's a bad card. This next card, though. This next Ooh. card, though. <laughs> This next card, though, has uh, some spice to it. Uh, we're going over to white. We finished up with green, and we're going to start with white, the final section, friends. And it is going to be... Wait, I'm trying to find it. There it is. I found it. It's a Mary's Call. Uh, this is a seven-mana white sorcery that says, create two 4-4 four, four white angel warrior creature tokens with flying non-angel creatures you control gain indestructible until your next turn so you get two tokens four four flyers nice and uh your non-angel creatures not those tokens that you just made the other ones that aren't angels uh are indestructible for a full, full turn cycle so they're wrath proofed and whatnot um so <laughs> i gave uh, seth gave it an s crim and richard you gave it a b i gave it a c so we're gonna start with, with Seth as always. Uh, S versus C. Let's let's hear it. So 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 I don't understand why you wouldn't play this card in every deck. Uh, like, it makes two creatures. That's something that is good if you're control. It's good if you're a creature deck. It comes into play on tap, so the opportunity cost is really low. Yeah, I guess maybe it's like a low S in the sense that maybe not every five color deck would play it. But I think I would play this in. Every mono two color deck, most three color decks, and even a lot of four color decks, because sure it's not like super efficiently costed, but compared to the alternative of drawing a planes, it's way better than that. So I don't know. It's, it's the opportunity cost argument and the fact that creatures are good in essentially every deck. You're never going to be upset to have two four four flyers hanging around. Fair, fair, fair. For that cost, I am. <laughs> like it is, really? I mean, would you want to, I mean, it's better than doing nothing, but right. I, I would argue that it's not better than doing nothing because I, I didn't come planes. to play two four four white angel warriors. Like, un unlike Seagate Restoration, I can draw into more birds or whatever, or more Kithkin and do my thing. This is just making f two four four angels off theme. Doesn't further my game plan. Not exciting. Not even a good effect. Who's gonna wrath into this? It does nothing, right? So that's why I don't like this card. It's it's I, okay, but it doesn't further whatever you're trying to do with your deck. It's just like a random card. Like if you build a sweet Panamonicon deck and then you win with two white angel warriors, like are you satisfied? Are you okay with this? Like why even bother paying three life for this land in 99% of games and then for that 1% chance of winning the way you didn't want to win? So well, I mean, I, it, like I, a proliferate, like or not proliferate, populate deck might yeah, want. Yeah, so like in, in those decks, right? Which is why I rate it good. In specific uh, decks. In yeah. specific decks, right? If you want angels or you're building a warrior deck or I have you a, have tokens. I have like my Ineos deck, right? So like a blue-white flyers deck. So I'd want this. So. It's, it's weird to me that it doesn't protect 
angels, though. Like, you would think this card is like a slam dunk in an angel tribal deck, but the fact that it doesn't help angels means, like, <laughs> the, the target demographic that wants this the, card... The angels are coming down to save whatever creatures you have, right? That's, that's the flavor. Yeah, I, I get the flavor, but, like... Don't do you not want like who who's playing a Mary Shepherd or a Mary's call is a thing. Seth, <laughs> yeah, has no other creatures. I, mean, I'm sorry, I think I, I think the concern it was gonna maybe be too good if the angels were indestructible, yeah. possibly. But I mean, standard. Like back to Richard's point though, like. Do you feel bad if you have a Castle Arden Vale and you're not playing like soldiers or whatever? It's a land that just happens to make creatures. Castle Arden like, Vale happens every it, turn. Though. But, but you, you, you typically really don't use like it to a, win, though. You use it to stay alive, on? right? Like, yeah. <clears throat> That's what the angels uh, do, too, though. Plus, plus I mean, Castle Arden Vale pairs quite nicely with Divine Visitation. This just literally does nothing. It's a like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen I've seen a Marius Call be cast twice in I don't know how many Commander games I've played since it's, it's been released. Both times it was very lackluster. I mean, having two four forts on the battlefield is a little bit scary late game where like if you're at like 20 or so life, then you know, getting chunked in the air for damage or eight damage each turn is pretty darn good, I guess. They don't even have vigilance though. I, 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 guess, I just I just always look at it compared to drawing like a basic of the same color out of my that, deck and how much more I would rather have this and I feel like I would much rather have two four four angels than my eighth land drop or whatever. That's <laughs> like for, just for wait no till reason. you need a Maria Sky Ruin. That's, yeah, well, that, that's <laughs> yeah, you're exactly playing white why, too, right? That's exactly why I don't like it in white. That's why I rated it a C. Is because much like black, I actually consider basic planes being very important for for white strategies. A Maria the Sky Ruin is way better of a card uh, than a Marius Call, and not being a Plains actually hurts it if you're counting it as a Lancelot. Uh, a Marius Shepherd is a card that I love running a bunch of times too, and not being a Plains again means it goes to my hand instead of uh, to the battlefield. So I feel like I feel like in mono white, especially like I have a mono white deck, I'm running like extra Plater Lens, I'm running Gauntlet of Power, I'm running Cage Sun, I'm running you know all these things to care about basic Plains, and a Marius Call just doesn't function with them so yeah I was just like, white cares yeah. more about the planes i think than all the other colors to me so I it's like yeah i i don't want to i don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves but you got it rated the same as mckinney stampede so <laughs> <laughs> you can you can make that's, an that's exception to your plane oh, rules and play mckinney stampede <laughs> Yo, McKinney Stampede is sick. <laughs> all right, all right. Let, let, let's let's jump to McKinney Stampede then, all right? Let's talk about McKinney Stampede. Okay. Yo, right. this card is sweet. <laughs> this is, it's a, this it's a, a, it's a limited all-star, honestly. Like, this is it insane. gives plus two to plus two to your team. That is yeah. the same card, right? Okay, all right. Yeah. Five mana, sorcery, three, and double white. This powerhouse of a sorcery gives all creatures you control plus two, plus two. Not plus one, plus one. Plus two, plus two until end of turn. Mm -hmm. That that Insanity. matters. That that actually that is a team like pump effect right yeah. there. I I will play trumpet blast. All right, and, and this is better than a trumpet blast. Seth and I we actually agreed on this one. We gave it a C. Uh, but Richard and Krim, you're very well, high on it. I rated me. it. Is this the first time like someone's rated something higher than Seth? Yeah, yeah I guess so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it might, it might be. It's both you and I. Like I think this is great in aggressive strategies. This is just yeah. better Go than. Wide? Yeah. Yeah, the go wide strategy. I, like this card is sweet. It's plus two plus. It's, it, an it's a effect. land for your go wide strategies, and it's yeah. good in that and garbage in every other deck, right? But if you try to go wide, it's, it's not bad. Yeah, I feel like there's so much I'm, better finishers for go wide than a plus this, two plus. But this two. is but a it's land. a land. This is a land. <laughs> oh, but it's a land. Ah, uh, but but it but it's not a plains. <laughs> I know yeah. that's go why wide, I don't like go it. Go wide is probably not caring of caring about like a Maria Shepherd. And stuff yeah, like exactly. That, right? that that's the difference. Like in my Dragon's deck, I, I love this. In every like my not a bird's deck, but my flyer's deck, I love this. There there's just so many things that uh, like a go wide deck can do with this or have it be a land. I'd play it in tokens. I wouldn't just this is one that I almost never play, but I have always thought in the back of my mind if I like play a dedicated token deck, I would probably run it, but even in just like a white deck that has a reasonable number of creatures and is attacking, the effect just does not appeal to me for its cost. This is shocking to me yeah. that Seth will play this card. 
it has to, it has to also, attack. It ends the game. I don't really attack. <laughs> it's not I'm sad. Not an attacker, so, uh, <laughs> if, if, if it's cry, if it's cry two or something, <laughs> you would totally play if it. If it's a draw card, card. Yeah. <laughs> you, you oh yeah, would, you would definitely. Yeah, okay. This card. If, if if the plus two plus two effect was just literally just pay five mana, sorcerer speed draw card, Seth would be. Seth would play. Uh, I mean, that'd be a staple every day. <laughs> SSS. SS. All the S's. Yeah. Let's go wide Double only. And then even then. All right. We're going, we're going to move on. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to... We're gonna I'm just going to say Skyclave Relic. This is another card Cl- that we can cleric. quickly... Cleric. Whatever. Oh, cleric. Bad. Yeah, actually. Yeah, that does... That is matter. <laughs> okay. Skyclave... Rel- Relic is a good card. Really Skyclave matter. Cleric. This is a two-mana core cleric. One, three. When it enters the battlefield, you gain two life. It's trash. Uh, we all gave it these for trash. Uh, don't play. Even in a cleric deck, even in a core deck, you got better options. Um, so it's bad. Uh, so we'll move on to... Are we going to leave... I'm going to leave, uh, the yeah. you know, the card for last. Uh, so we're going to move on to uh, Kabira Takedown. This is a... Do do do! I know this card. I play this a lot. This is you a, rank it so highly. You don't even really remember the CMC. All right, all right. I multitasking. All right, all right. So we got the Kabira Takedown. This is a two mana instant. Kabira Takedown deals damage equal to the number of creatures you control to target creature or planeswalker. So instant speed, two mana, deal damage in white. Ooh la la! Equals the number of creatures. So it's a instant speed removal in white. MDFC. Uh, Richard, Seth, and Krim, you're all in agreement that it's a B, and I gave it an A. Dun, dun, dun. I guess uh, I have I mean, to defend myself, I guess. Yeah. It, There's no way you Any really deck that a. runs a bunch of creatures in white, I'm super happy in running it. Like, it's insane. In a like, specific deck, it is pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but, like, I, most of my white decks have a bunch of creatures in it, especially if it's a go, if it's a go wide deck, it's, like, an obviously an auto include but any like white deck that just has a bunch of random creatures on it which is like 90 percent of the white decks i make you know if i have like four creatures on it i can kill a four toughness creature at instant speed for two mana and it's a or planeswalker or which is I, nice i guess i guess if i'm versus crew <laughs> then uh very specifically it, it's, that's more it's relevant. nice it's it nice. is nice no i i actually agree I don't usually run up against Planeswalkers, but I, I mean, if if I was against like an Ugin or whatever, there's a four loyalty, I would, I would <laughs> snipe it a little bit. Uh, assuming my creatures are alive by that point, but um, you would pick it off, yeah, and then you would but, cast McKindy Stampede. And then I I, I can see why you, why uh, of the others you rate it all as bees. You, you like it a little bit less than me. I get it. I get it. I get it. The, I, for me, the reason why I like it a little bit less than you do is just because it requires me to have a decent amount of creatures, right? Don't some planeswalkers make creatures though? Like sure, that sure. The whole thing. <laughs> but but like it, in, <laughs> this this is great in a go wide strategy where I like a token deck where I can just start like pooping out creatures all day long. But but it, but the issue this is kind of like going back to the fight spell except the fight spell is much worse than this but yeah because like the type of deck this can go in it is quite often you'll have a lot of creatures or at least enough the, to do something this one i used to rank higher but I, now that i've actually played with it a bunch and had it not work out the way that i would like to have it work out several times because like one of your creatures <laughs> dies in response or something oh, that, uh, I, I i still play it often but i'm not as high on it as i used to be because i feel like it's actually Unlike some of the other removal spells, it is a risky removal spell that does take a lot of setup to actually get right. Isn't very good in the early game, so it's not bad, but not as good as I was thinking it was when it was first printed. Yeah, I'm close to C on this. Like, yeah. you can't kill big things. It's really difficult. Uh, so maybe you can snipe a hull breacher, maybe, but you have, like, three creatures on board. That's only plausible in, like, a token strategy. Like, if you have three normal creatures, like, you're probably really far ahead. Somehow you didn't get wrath yet. Uh, like, good luck killing, like, a titan or something with this, right? It's, like, very difficult. So it's conditional. And then it's one-for-one one removal on top of that, which I already don't like. You don't like, like one-for-one. That's a yeah, different so topic. It's, it's, like, super <laughs> conditional. And then I need my planes for, you know, my other effects and stuff like that. So so it's okay. It's good for go wide, but I wouldn't put it in just generic white decks. Yeah. I mean, I definitely count this as a spell. Like, when I'm counting target removal on my deck, I count this as a target removal instead of, like, a, a land. Wouldn't you just play like generous gift or something like? Yeah, but this is isn't there better removal if you're swords, counting in a yeah, removal like path, like so anything. many white removal spells. <laughs> I may, I, first of all, I build budget decks, so come on now. 
But second of all, oh, like okay. I will run Swords of Plowshares. I will run Generous Get, but I still want like eight target removal spells. Not necessarily eight targeted creature removal spells, mind you, but I don't know. I, 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 I've run it in a lot of decks, and I'm usually really happy to see it. Obviously, you know, it won't work in all decks, and sometimes you'll be in a spot where you can't kill the thing you want, but two mana instant, I don't know. I like it. All right, we'll move on to another card that I seem to like more than others. Uh, this is Sajiri Shelter. This is a two mana instant. Target creature you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. Krim and, and Richard, you gave it a B. Seth and I gave it an A. Uh, so Krim, you don't you you think God's willing is better? And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. well, this this card is it's good in the right kind of deck, like a feather deck or something like that. But I'm not going to put this in every deck. Once again, this is a little bit like the McKindy spell up top or whatever the like the, the black, black spell. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> like I think this is really good if I have a commander um, and and like that I really want to protect. So if I'm all in on that or like a Boros deck that relies on equipping its commander and all of that, so you know. You could protect it that way. But other than that, I'm not putting it in every deck. It's still a good card. I'm just not putting it in every deck. I agree with Grim. I probably wouldn't even put it in the car- the decks that need it because that, that one extra mana from God's Willing is actually important. It means you got to play your important creature with two mana to spare, and which spare. is actually quite difficult, right? Like having one extra mana is already difficult enough. Like having two is a, is a big deal. And then plus this effect isn't universal, so like only for decks where you really need your commander or targeting has a purpose, I think it's a good card, but I wouldn't just slam it in a generic deck. I like it more than Malachar Rebirth just because I feel like white decks have commanders and cards that I need to protect more than black decks do, and also white is so bad compared to black that I need every little bit of value I can get out of my mono white deck. So while black is like, my stuff dies, I'll just draw more cards. White white is like, my thing dies, my game is over. (laughs) Okay, I don't... I I mean, I agree with Seth on the rating. I don't agree with him on the the reasoning. I really like Malachi Rebirth. I put Malachi Rebirth as an S because it doesn't cost any extra mana for its effect. And it also protects you from board wipes. So indirect removal... Uh, still protects your creature as long as it's not an exile effect or a tuck effect. Um, so Jerry Shelter is only protection against target removal, so it's significantly worse in that regard. It costs more mana, two instead of one, which I agree with Richard makes it worse. Um, but I do like that it gives a protection which you can use offensively. Like I've had situations where I have a big creature and an opponent has a bunch of you know colored creatures all of the same color and i pr- give it protection from that color i swing it for lethal so it's an invasion in that regard as well all right uh moving on last but certainly not least and this is kind of like the card that is the progenitor of this entire discussion so for the people who are frantically trying to find the timestamp where we actually talk about this card here you go it's on <laughs> inversion the time has finally come everyone friends and family uh, this is a eight mana, eight mana, eight mana, lots of mana, sorcery, uh, destroy all non-land permanents. So it's a big old board wipe. It wipes, Amazing. It wipes the board for eight whopping mana, eight mana. In commander, it cleans the board, right? <laughs> so, so. At so, the cost of a land. I don't know. It, it I don't know if I'm getting trolled. I don't know if I'm getting trolled, but it seems like Seth, Richard, and Krim, you all gave it an S. And I gave it a B. An S plus, yeah. according this to Why Steve. are you so wrong, <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been waiting so hours to this? ask you, why are you so wrong about this card? It's not a one-for-one. One. Commander, like, there's so many problematic permanents, right? That you And this just clean sweeps it at the cost of a land. <laughs> See, okay, so the reason why I put, I put this uh, lower than you. First of all, I say good in certain decks. B means good in certain decks. I'm very ha- happy to cast this in certain decks. And the reason why I don't put it higher than this is because the card that it is comparing to is our a revelation to me. This is a six mana sorcery that also destroys all non-land permanents. But I think if there's 10 or more non-land permanents on the battlefield, uh, I, forget, I forget the exact stipulation. Uh, yeah, uh, it costs three less to cast if there are ten or more non-land permanents on the battlefield, which is almost every single time I've cast Arrow of Revelation. I'm, I don't remember the last time I haven't cast Arrow of Revelation for more than three mana. 
Three mana, destroy all non-land permanents, versus eight mana, destroy all non-land permanents. Our Revelation is just so much better than Ondu Inversion, and it costs the exact same amount, or it costs even less because it's been reprinted to the very ground. Then you put both in your deck. Yeah, right? no, like, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Need, I don't <laughs> like you only play one wrath, yeah. and one's a land. It's I a land. Want, I don't want to blow up the entire board. I want to leave some of my stuff up. Like I'll have an hour revelation, and I want like an austere commander or a cleansing nova that gives me more flexibility on what I blow up. Sometimes I don't want to blow up everything. But so like, what about not? the flexibility of a land yeah. or undo inversion? If you don't want to blow up everything, just play a land. <laughs> no, I I much prefer like if I have one slot for a destroy all non land permanents, I'm gonna put you, our revelation one? in there. My, yes. Well, only even one? if you only have one slot, you know I'll what the trick is. Don't this is a land. Maybe you only have one slot. You replace a planes. You don't gotta take yeah. out your hour <laughs> revelations. This isn't competing with the one slot. This is giving you a bonus. You get to do it twice. I'm in not your gonna deck. take out planes for it. I count it as a spell. I count this one as a spell, not a bad oh, yeah. planes. <laughs> so that that's the thing I, is it's <laughs> counting as a non land spot. And I'm looking between our revelation and it. And I'm going to play Hour of Revelation every single time. Every single time. Three mana versus eight mana for the same so, effect. So, so would you Not put Hour of Revelation in your white weenie deck? Over onto Inversion? Yes. No. 100% no. no. That's 100% wrong, what? right? You cannot put a Wrath in your... 100% creature Would you deck, put an right? inversion into it, though? Yeah, because yes. you could replace a land. Because it's yeah. a land, I don't want to right? replace a land. <laughs> <laughs> like, sometimes you need to Wrath, and you don't want to cast a Wrath in a creature-only deck you know that's a weird slot to have right if you draw it early when nothing's going on you don't want to do that you can play it as a land right late game it's a good reset button when you're playing kithkin right yeah, so but- for that reason it's actually in every single deck control decks need additional wraths as yep. a land perfect creature decks don't want to use a spell slot for wrath here you go right it goes into literally every deck 5c deck in this is as close to a universal staple for me as possible, right? Yep. I will play like weird lands to make more white mana to include this in my 5C deck, right? <laughs> this is the best MDFC to me. Of the oh, ball. come on. <laughs> it All legit right. is the best MDFC. I don't know if getting trolled or not. <laughs> you are not. How are you so joking? not I, got too far. It. I, I wouldn't go that far. Tangled for oh, oh, God. Oh, my God. God. All right. I, no. I see no. what this is. This is all led to I dunking agree. of me. No, uh-huh. legitimately, this is the best MDFC. It can go in I, every deck. We've cast It'll, this card so many times on Commander Clash. So many games were begging for an undo inversion off the top. Right? And what did you draw? You probably drew a planes. Right? You are running our revelation, version. which is shame on you all. Because our but, revelation has been there the entire time. You run time. both and you have like a two of 60 shot of drawing. Ah, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. No. No. It's like, a- what is the thing we ask most for on Commander Clash? A wrath. A wrath that hits everything, right? This is a free one in your land slot. It's not a free one. It costs eight mana. But There's so the- many times when I've had Ondu Inversion sitting in my hand, I just don't have the mana to cast it. But it's who, like, who needs to Wrath on Curve? Well, then right? play like, as a land. It's very <laughs> rare that you have to Wrath on Curve, right? I think this card, you, I put it, okay, I put it as a B, first of all. This is not like the worst MDFC of all time. I will <laughs> run it, and I will happily run it in, say, an Omnath deck, the four-color Omnath deck, and where I play it as a land early on, then I have I have my Karoos, I have my Balance Lands, I have ways to return to my hand when I need to wrap the board. Plus, getting to 8 mana in a land-based deck is really simple. I can consistently get to it, so it's fine. It's like amazing. It's a staple in that deck. Um, I will run it in other decks as well. If I'm in like a heavy control deck, I'm going to run it in there too. And I want multiple Wraths. And I, you know, like, instead of running my usual like three or so board wipes, I'm going to run, you know, five... And then that will be number five. That is fine. But no, if I if I if I'm only running one hour revelation effect, I'm putting hour of revelation. It's not an it. Hour of revelation. It's a no, land. I know what it is. Like, it's, like, it's a competes with I planes. Would, then I would. And play I want this my, in my planes. Go wide deck. I want my planes. It's an extra play under lens. I would put this shepherd. in my go wide deck. I would put this in my aggro deck. It's so good. It, it goes in every deck. Yeah, because you always need an emergency red button to blow up the board, right? That is, this, this is who, who doesn't hit eight mana in commander? If you're not hitting eight mana in commander in 2021, you're doing it wrong. No matter what color you are, you should be easily hitting eight mana unless you're Krim and like kept a yeah. one lander and like drew eight non lands in a row, right? Like. 
I, eight mana I is like not it. a big deal. I like it in certain decks, and I stand by that. I, so ramp decks, and what was the other one? Control decks? Super what, what control was? decks, yeah. I mean, I very strongly disagree with you, Tomer, but... You did say going into this that you evaluate MDFCs as if they were spells. Yes. And if I try to put myself into your seat and look at it from Tomer's perspective, where there's no backside to the MDFCs, it's not actually a land, it's just a spell. From that perspective, it does look a lot worse than Hour of Revelation. I would argue that's the wrong but, way to evaluate Yeah, that's MDFCs. the wrong way. Right? It's still a hundred card game. I'm not card thinking card. that way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, but that, that means that you're advocating running like 60 lands or something, right? As opposed to like a 50 like, you know, lands and mana sources, right? But either way, it's a 100-card deck. Are you putting this card in your deck, yes or no? And I'm putting it in How, some of my decks. I'm yeah, so no matter what reasoning you use, you're still wrong. You didn't put it in your deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is in every deck that can play it. If you can, yeah, if this... you get white mana in your deck, you are playing this. If, if I got white mana, this is one of the first lands that goes in my deck every time. Yeah. This, this, is, this goes at the start of every single deck. Like my, yep. my deckless editor starts with an undo inversion in it and a dousing oh, dagger. Oh, a compilation! <laughs> a number of times you wanted to cast undo inversion, but you couldn't. And I bet you, I bet you, those decks and those times where you're running undo inversion, you weren't running our revelation, and our revelation could have saved you. But oh no 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 no, you were running <laughs> undo inversion instead, not with, not in addition to, instead of, and that is the mistake, my friends. That is it, the mistake. What do you mean? It's in addition. Usually it's because it's, instead I'm, of a land. Mm, <laughs> so I, I a have land. a board wipe. Yeah, the and then when you have place. your Mary of the Sky Ruin and you have, you know, the Mary of Shepherd and you're like, oh, well, I wish this was a plane. That's why. That's what happens. <laughs> yeah, but what, what about what when, you, let, let's just say your opponent has a Ristic study or something out and all these other things and you're just empty on board. Well, you know what? Well, let's gee, I wish, I wish I got, I got <laughs> an earlier reset that cost a three mana instead of eight. But yeah. now you increase like, the odds like who, of you having Like, that. who's yeah, trying to cast planes. these things on curve, right? And since you wipe the board of everything, no one's going to kill you. You just help the table, right? You don't need to like make a temple play. You don't have eight mana to cast it. Like, it could happen. And if you... If you have undue inversion, Tomer, you don't have to make tough choices like Ristic Study or <laughs> Ugin, things like all that. Right. Like, all right. this just takes care of all it right. for you. We, we, <laughs> covered, we covered all the MDCs. We're running out of time. Sorry, we can't finish this discussion, apparently. Uh, we, we spent a lot of time on undue inversion. For we're, we're, we're putting a poll up on this. I really want to know what, like... The viewers think like are we somehow like a weird group and we're skewed a certain way we're like Does this onto inversion all start like literally you're saying that onto inversion is the top mdfc right this was it the is. argument yes. it or, is. Or he I, I like, no no joke i'm not trolling at all like those are my top two right those <laughs> floor the, the florahedron i do not mine <laughs> mine is like valakut <laughs> awakening one. number one seagat restoration number two malakir rebirth number three i guess we're all wow. different on this too like we're all, yeah, all pretty I, different I, I have Seagate, Valakut Awakening, but also Floral Hedron and Andu Inversion. Those would be my my and top my top call, four apparently. top tier. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do, do top three. Narrow it down to top three. All right, top three. What are you cutting oh, out of that Let's finish it up with top threes. Uh, all right, top three MDFCs. They gotta be in order, or just top just three. Whatever you feel okay. Like. Yeah, put yeah. it in order. Uh, if you okay. Want to. Put okay. it in order. Put it in order. Uh, yeah. Number okay. one. Okay. Uh, like number. <laughs> number number uh. Three will be on to inversion. Oh. Oh. Number two, oh, so Valakut Awakening. <laughs> Number two, Valakut Awakening. Number one, Tangled Floral Hedron. Oh, what? <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. I regret asking. I don't need, oh, my God. I don't even know. <laughs> regret asking. Asking. It's so good. It's so good. Every deck. Every deck you want that ramp spell. Put it. Try it, Tober. You, try you it. lost Tober's over to the respect dark side. as a magic player. <laughs> <laughs> How is Flora Hedra number one? All right, let, let's it's move so on. From extra disappointment, Richard. Tell me, tell me your top three. All right, number three, Seagate Restoration. Okay. Number two, Tangled Flora Hedra. Ah! Number one, Undo Inversion. Ah! <laughs> yes. Crim. It is actually perfect for me because I play uh, jank tribal decks. I cannot justify running a Wrath of God, but sometimes I need to reset the board. Undo Inversion, always there for me. Undo uh, Inversion's got you, whatever you need. Always there for you. Your buddy. Always there. The birds, the backed by the birds. Your buddy. Undo Inversion. by the Kiskin. What more do you need? Yeah. Fine. All right, Krim, let's finish it up. What's, what's your top three, buddy? 
Uh, so my top three would be uh, probably, okay, Hagra Mauling, then it would be Balagad Recovery, and then it'd be Undo Inversion. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I Oof. mean, so the, uh, the, the third and second place, kind of self-explanatory, oh. but like the mm-hmm. first one, even more self-explanatory. Actually, they're all self-explanatory. They're all really good cards, but Undo Inversion being the best of all the MDFCs because every deck should have a something to board reset. And if you can, if you can, like, e- even if you're an aggro deck, you should still have one. So, you know, why not have one in place of a planes? Cool, cool. Hard <laughs> reset, by the way. All right, my top three. Seagate Restoration in three. On to Malakir inversion. Rebirth in two. And on at number inversion. one, Valakid Awakening. No on to inversions. Ah, oh, oh. <laughs> Or Floral Heater. No. I mean, floral Heater. <laughs> no. Kaka. That card's Kaka. No. No. <laughs> All the right, card is <laughs> that's it for our show, everybody. We're pushing uh, over an hour and a half at this point. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you enjoy my misery. And uh, we learned, we, we've settled upon nothing. We've changed nothing, <laughs> changed no opinions. It's fine. Uh, tell us what you think, though. Tell us this discourse. Give us your top three and things. We'll read all of them. And yeah, let's put let's, let's put the top three in the comments, yes. and we'll also put up a poll to see if Anu Inversion is good or not. Oh, it God. is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't let me down, uh, viewers. Anyway, all right, so that wraps up our show, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any suggestions for future podcast topics, leave a comment in the uh, comment section below. And if you have any questions you want to see answered in a future podcast, uh, we usually do Clash Rail. We did not do any this week uh, because we are running very long. Uh, but you can send us a tweet on Twitter, hashtag Clash Mail, ask us a question, and we'll choose one question to answer at the end of every single podcast, except for this one because it's very long. All right, that's our show, everybody. Hope you enjoyed. And until next time, friends, see ya. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, help us out by clicking the like button down below. And to keep up with the latest and greatest, make sure to click the subscribe button. And if you want to watch similar videos, click on the links appearing on screen right now.